Shalom. First and foremost, I want to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem Rechakwadash. Yahweh, his name is Heavenly Father, meaning He is, He exists, He to be. Ba'in Hada Shem name, Yahweh Shai, being the only begotten Son, meaning He delivers, He saves. Rechakwadash, Holy Spirit. Double honors to the apostles and elders of great most that were well. Peace and blessings to the elect of Israel. Shalom and Ababa Ball. Back at it again with the lesson of the Spirit of Power. Yahweh Bashem Hashai, Lord willing, lesson is edifying. All right, and this is just another edition of, uh, you know, basically a spiritual character building. This is things that will help, you know, help you maintain your peace in this truth, man, because, you know, you'll realize once you get to a certain point in this truth, all right, you just want to maintain your peace, all right, your mental clarity, okay? You know, and saying we'll try to do certain things to throw that off, you know, because at the end of the day, you know, there comes a point where, you know, of course, there's highs and lows in this truth. Like the Apostle Paul said, I know how to base and I know how to bound. But there comes a point in this truth where you're, you know, spiritually speaking, smooth sailing. You know what I mean? You're staying consistent in good work. So saying can't really come to you directly. So he'll try to come to somebody else to throw you off or he'll come to another avenue to throw you off, you know. So with that being said, OK, in this particular avenue, sometimes saying, well, put the spirit on somebody all right to uh you know try to argue with you go back and forth all right you know and sometimes through the spirit you you do spaz on people you know but it, i gotta be through the spirit but a lot of times it usually leads to you doing it out of strife out of envy and you know just carnality being petty the best thing to do really is to just don't argue with a fool man all right don't argue with a fool don't argue with eve don't argue with a nigga who clearly is not mental mentally stable okay don't even bother because at the end of the day you're just gonna bring more stress into your life you know now you might not have to agree with what the person is doing or what, what the person is saying but to really waste your energy and go back and forth with them is not worth it, man. Now, sometimes it happens through the spirit, but it takes discipline also to be able to just bite your tongue and be like, you got it. Because you want to be like, nah, you're wrong. X, Y, and Z, this, that, and the third. I'm right. You're wrong. And it feels good to be right. It feels good to, you know what I'm saying, you know, have, have the last word in the argument and, you know what I mean, having the smart, slick responses and all the other stuff. But you know, there comes a certain point in time where it feels even better to just not even argue. It feels even better to just hold your peace. OK. And, you know, you know, what I'm saying. It, it, but we're going to get let the scripture talk. OK. Ecclesiastes 19 and 6. He that can rule his tongue shall live without strife. And he that hateth babbling shall have less evil. That's right. You know, because we're still going to go through different troubles in this flesh. We have less evil if you hate babbling, though. If you hate going back and forth, you hate talking, you know what I'm saying? You hate uh, doing all that extra stuff, that bickering and arguing, okay? <laughs> like Benjamin be saying with all the Ray Ray, you know? You know, hey, don't even bother. All right, if you can rule your spirit, if you can rule your tongue and hold your peace and just know when to just be quiet, man, all right, you will have less evil because you're not going back and forth heaping coals upon a man that's uh, uh, full of talk, man. All right. Just make a fine man. The best thing to do is use a soft answer. Does not the scripture say a soft answer turneth away wrath? All right. But grievous words stir up anger. So if you use a soft answer, all right, if you can, if you know, even if you, even when you, and these are a little spiritual psychology, okay, this is spiritual psychology, man. A lot of times when you talk to somebody and let's say somebody is, ah, you know, just barking at you. If you reply back with a soft answer and you continually do that, eventually they're going to turn down. 
they may not do it at first but eventually they're going to turn down because it's just spiritual psychology is naturally in a human's nature to, to calm down oh, okay this person is talking to me quiet let me talk to them quiet now you know but when you bark back ah, nah, ah, nah, 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 you know you, you guys are just going back and forth you're going to only just stir up more anger and you're really just going to you know at the end of the day rob your own self of your own peace and mental stability and clarity Okay, because, you know, you want to be right. You got to have the last word. And yes, I know it feels good being right and having the last word, but it's like it ain't worth it, man. It's not worth it. And you'll come to find out that really is it's really immature to always got to have the last word and to always be right. Yeah, it feels good, but it's not mature. You know, a true sense of maturity or a true sign of maturity is like, you know, you know how to take the low. You know how to turn the other cheek, as Yahweh I said. Okay, and just keep it pushing. Hey, you got it. You got it. That's the sign of maturity right there. When someone when someone can do that, that's a dangerous person because that person knows how to rule their spirit. man. You know, but when you when you get triggered and somebody's easily able to trigger you. All right. Then, then they have control over you because all they got to do is just growl you up, say certain things and then boom, you off the hinges now. And now they got the one up on you. Not even knowing you, not even knowing they do, but they do because they can get under your skin, man. But when you rule your spirit and you show them, like, like, look, I'm, I'm unmovable. Yeah, how about you? I got me rooted. It's like, damn. I, I, no matter what I do, I can't get under his skin. Eventually, they're gonna fall back. That's why the Lord said, "Resist the devil, and he will flee from you, man." Okay. So let's get the scripture. Proverbs 15 and 1. A soft answer turneth away wrath. But grievous words stir up anger. That's right, man. Grievous words stir up anger. Says the tongue of the wise useth knowledge aright, but the mouth of fools poureth out foolishness. That's right. So don't don't cont don't you know reciprocate what a fool is doing. Okay, don't pour out foolishness like he is because he wants to babble and run his mouth and talk a bunch of shit. Because hey, at the end of the day, the scriptures say, every idle word man shall speak, he shall give account in the day thereof, man. All right, I'm paraphrasing. That's Matthew 12 and 36. So you got to remember everything that you say, even if it's just idle talk, you're going to have to give an account for that, man. So the best thing to do really is to not talk a lot. How can you get in trouble for something you didn't say? At least with the Heavenly Father. How can you truly get in trouble with Yahweh Hashem Shai for something you didn't say? You might get in trouble with man, you know, because somebody might slander on you, lie on you, say you said something, or maybe take your words out of context. But what the Lord knows all right, the Lord knows the full spectrum. So how can you truly get in trouble for something you didn't say or something you didn't do? Okay? With the ultimate judge, which is Yahweh. All right? Yahweh Bashmel Shah. You know? So hey, he that hates babbling shall have less evil. All right? This is um, Ecclesiasticus uh, 28 and 12. Let me go to the scripture, Lord willing. Ecclesiastes 28 and 12 it says um, if thou blow the spark it shall burn if thou spit upon it it shall be quenched and both these come out of thy mouth right all right like let's say you have a sage and if you blow on it or if you you put some wind to it that sage is gonna uh, increase its fire all right and it, you know depending on how much wind is being blown upon that sage it might literally light on fire okay and i'm talking about it in a literal sense but nonetheless if you spit on it you pour water on it what are you going to do you're going to quench the fire it says both of these come out of thy mouth meaning what your your mouth has the power to either diffuse the situation or to excite a situation even further man that's why i should say life and death is in the power of the tongue man you know, and depending on how you use it is depending on the type of reward you're going to get from it, man. You know, the tongue is a little member, but it kindles a great fire, man. It boasts of many things as we, you know, as it says in James, the third chapter. So even though the tongue seems like such a small member of the body, it can get you into a lot of trouble or it can get you out of trouble. That's why, yeah, which I said for by thy words, thou shalt be justified and by thy words, thou shalt be condemned, man. Okay. So you have to watch what you're saying, how you're saying it, 
you know, like the Apostle Paul said, let your speech be seasoned with salt. Yeah. Colossians 4. Okay. Colossians 4. I'm going to actually start at verse 5. It says, Colossians 4 and 5, walk in wisdom toward them that are without redeeming the time. That's right. So you got to use wisdom. All right. You got to behave yourself wisely in everything that you do, just like King David did. And it says, toward them that are without, right? Those who don't have the wisdom of the Lord, you got to walk in wisdom towards them, especially because nowadays people are so demonically infested and so, you know, uh, highly irritated, highly agitated to where a lot of people, if you, if you say the wrong thing to them, if you even look at them the wrong way, they ready to shoot you, man. You know? So, it, yes, it feels good to be like, yeah, I told him. You know, yeah, I snapped on him. This, that, and the third. Yeah, yeah, of course, it feels good for your ego. But is it always wise? No. The wiser thing to do is to be like, hey, man, guess what? <laughs> you got it. <laughs> and walk away. And walk away. And no, that's not, that's not you being a coward. That's not you being a punk. That's really you having wisdom. Okay, that's being smart because it's like, hey, and when a nigga, when a hothead nigga calms down, eventually you're gonna be like, damn, hey, that dude, hey, that dude was right, man. You know, it ain't that big of a deal. I'm glad he didn't uh, go back and forth with me, you know, if the nigga got some sense at least. All right, but you know, a lot of times when people get in their emotions, they get in their feelings, you know, logic goes out the window. You know, that's why we got to constantly pray to the Lord to, to, to give us the spirit to rule our spirit so we can walk with our wits. We can be logical. Colossians 4 and 6, let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer every man. That's right, man. So our speech got to always be seasoned with grace and salt, man. You know, we got to know how to talk to people. We have to know, you know, who we're talking to as well. You can't just be talking to everybody any type of fucking way. You talk to the wrong person the wrong way, and that might be your life. Okay? The scriptures say how, you know, it's better to slip upon the pavement than to slip with the tongue, man. And a fool's mouth calls for strokes. You, you, you talk shit to the wrong person, and you get your ass kicked, man. All right? So, you know, how much more to a man of the Lord at that? All right? So, you, you know, you got to make sure you treat brothers with respect, man. Okay? But, um... Nonetheless, I'm going to continue on the lesson. Proverbs 21 and 23. Whoso keepeth his mouth and his tongue keepeth his soul from troubles. That's right, man. So if you're able to do that, you're keeping back your soul from troubles, man. Okay? So if you keep your mouth, you can rule your spirit. Guess what? You're, 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 you're making your chances better of having less issues and, and drama. Ecclesiastes 22 and 13. Actually, yeah, I'm going to read it. Ecclesiastes 22 and 13. Talk not much with the fool. And go not to him that have no understanding. Beware of him. Lest thou have trouble. And thou shalt never be defiled with his fooleries. Depart from him. And thou shalt find rest. And never be disquieted with madness. That's right. Talk not much with a fool, man. You know, when you, when you, when you see that, hey, this person ain't got it. Keep it pushing. Hey, you got it. You got it. <laughs> Let me see. Proverbs 14 to 7. Go from the presence of a foolish man when thou perceivest not in him the lips of knowledge. That's right. So you got to just know when to walk away, man, and just be like, hey, you got it, man. Talk not much with a fool because when you go back and forth with a fool, you can end up like him because now you're arguing with a fool, man. And that is foolish. Okay, Proverbs 26 and 4. Answer not a fool according to his folly, lest thou be also like unto him. Verse, verse 5. Answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own conceits. That's right. So let's get, the, let's get a different translation going into that real quick. And really, you know, especially us being younger brothers... You know, you know, of course, you got a lot of elderly brothers, brothers been in the truth, brothers who are seasoned. But like right now, I'm speaking to the younger brothers because I myself am a younger brother. We younger brothers are really supposed to be reticent. We're not supposed to be, you know, real talkative and, you know, 
I always got something to say. Okay, it's really better if we listen more than we talk. Now, now brothers might think I don't want you being a hypocrite because you know when I get around the brothers, I be talking a lot. But I only be talking a lot around the brothers because you know it's like a it's like a it's like a um, therapy session for me. I get to actually open up. You know what I'm saying, and and be able to talk to brothers, man. But uh, you know, a lot of times when I'm out and about in the world doing my own thing, I'm quiet as a mouse, man. You know. But the Lord is my witness. Proverbs 26 and 4 says, Answer not a fool according to his folly, lest thou be like unto him. So let's get the Bible comparison. Let's see what it is. Let's see what they got. Here's a good one. This is Proverbs 26 and 4 in the BBE. It says, do not give the foolish man a foolish answer or you will be like him, right? And to go back and forth with a fool or to entertain a fool's wickedness or his foolish talk, you, 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 you're just like him, okay? This is in the NET, do not answer a fool according to his folly, lest you yourself also be like him. NLT, New Living Translation, don't answer the foolish arguments of fools or you will become as foolish as they are. Hit the nail on the head. Hit the nail on the head, man. Get another one. It's Proverbs 26 and 5 in the NLT. Be sure to answer the foolish arguments of fools or they will become wise in their own estimation. Right. And what does that mean? That means that, like, if someone says some dumb shit to you, okay, you're not going to be a fool like them and go back and forth and entertain their foolishness or argue with them. All right. But you're going to answer them according to their foolish answer and be like, look, that's wrong. Here's the answer X, Y and Z. And what they do with the information after that, that's on them. OK, that's good. That's basically what it's going into. All right. But it's best for us to practice talking less. The scriptures say, let thy speech be short with few words, comprehending much. R roughly paraphrasing, man. All right, Matthew 7 and 6, give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you. Yeah, yeah, don't don't bother going back and forth with a wicked nigga, man. You know, if a nigga don't get the truth, don't break your back for him to understand, man. Hey, move on, okay? So what? Because at the same time, here it is, you might be putting him on game in the spirit, but he'll turn around and want to literally attack you because you're telling him the righteous reproofs of the Lord, man. So for wisdom's sake, man, just keep it pushing, man. Like this like truth say, he that is holy, let him be holy still. He that is filthy, let him be filthy still, man. Okay? So if a nigga want to be filthy, let him be filthy, man. And if a brother want to be holy, let him be holy. Okay? <laughs> Proverbs 9 and 6, forsake the foolish and live and go in the way of understanding. That's right. Go in the way of understanding. Forsake foolish talk, man. You know? He that reproveth the scorner getteth himself, getteth to himself shame, and he that rebuketh the wicked man getteth himself a blot. Yeah. That's what it's like, man. You tell a you tell a wicked nigga what to do, how to do something correctly. You know, he looks at you like 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 you a fool, like you're ashamed. You know? Man, don't talk to that nigga, man. He always talk about the Bible and shit, man. You know, I hate talking to that nigga, man. <laughs> but here it is. You're putting him on game. You're telling him the righteous, uh, the righteous reproofs of the Lord, and they they looking at you like you crazy. So the best thing to do is not tell him shit. Okay. Don't even argue with him. Don't even bother. And sometimes, you know, through the spirit, we do argue with these niggas because it's sometimes it just be through the spirit, you know. But. The better thing to do, really, is to just be like, all right, brother, you got it. And just keep it pushing, man. You know? Proverbs 9 and 8. Reprove not a scorner, lest he hate thee. Rebuke a wise man, and he will love thee. That's right. So don't bother rebuking a wicked person, man. Because they're not going to listen to you anyways. Proverbs 23 and 9. Speak not in the ears of a fool, for he will despise the wisdom of thy words. That's right. He ain't going to hearken. Okay? You're not going to listen, man. So... I just wanted to wrap it up with that. Don't bother arguing with these foolish ass niggas. If anybody else got any precepts, you know, feel free to put them on the comment board. But, you know, it's all about edification. But at the end of the day, man, don't even bother. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. All right. So with that, I want to give all praise on and glory to Yahweh. Basham, Yahweh, Shai, Basham, Chakradash, Double Honesty, Apostle of the Great Muslim, their well, peace and blessing to the elect of Israel. 
Shalom and Ababa.